So Denise, there's a lot of things that the pros do, isn't there, that the amateurs often don't. And there's some really basic things that will make such a difference to your game if you did them. Absolutely, and they're things that you have control of as well. That's what I love about it. The, I think there's at least five things yep. that we have control of yep. Yep. that as amateurs, you can do them, and that's what pros do religiously, yes. these five things. And there's a bonus one at the end as well that yep. I can remember. Yep. Hopefully I'll remember it by then. Yep. <laughs>our number one thing that we think is so important that pros do all the time that, that amateurs don't is to get lessons regularly get yep. coaching even the best players in the world have a coach they have more coaching than the average amateur buys so much so even though they are at a very high level they're still being fine-tuned they're still having coaching yeah. so it would be either their caddy up uh, the caddy will be their eyes mm -hmm. their coach travels with them and even if their coach isn't traveling with them they are sending videos back yeah. uh, you know through yeah. all the new yeah. apps so yeah. that they're getting constantly yeah. so they're being mentored all the time so being mentored. Anything, it's more important for a player of less ability to get help than someone of, of a high ability so obviously we're not saying you need a coach traveling with you <laughs> But I'm available. <laughs> <laughs> At a price, I'm sure. <laughs> Going to exotic places. <laughs> um, so what, get a lesson once a month? Is that a good... Um, you know, I think... I believe in programs, so I think if you have a program and you do maybe like a six-week program or a four-week program, yeah. and then you could go into so one month. And, stuff. And, and doing it also for a lot of people in a small group, it's more cost-effective and you get to have more time yeah. with your, you know, so there's three or four of you in a group, yeah. you go out on the golf course, so you yeah. find out what's happening yeah. there, yeah. then you come back and you work on yeah. where you're losing shots, but I think the consistency to start with yeah. is absolutely yeah. It's the consistency of having your lessons so that you stay on track and yeah. then you can spread it out or you might decide you don't want to. But this sounds like I'm taking business away from golf coaches, but just a half hour lesson, it's kind of criminal. You feel like mm. if people aren't going to have follow-up. If that's up, all they can get, then that's better than no It's certainly lesson. better than nothing, but they still have to do the practice. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. There's no point getting lessons and then just no. wait until the next no. time you get a lesson no. and hope you'll yeah. be better. And, and don't feel, right. don't think, oh my God, I'm having a lesson. If the world's best players are having a lesson, you need to have a lesson yeah, as well. Yeah. Always be open to help because yeah. the experts know more than you do. You know, exactly. A lot of people go on and on thinking, I'll work it out, it'll get better, I'm just having a bad day. I think Harvey Pennock said, if if you have a bad round, forget it. Mm -hmm. If you have two bad rounds, check your grip, posture, yep. setup, basics. basics. If you have three bad rounds, go and get a lesson. Yeah, exactly. Because so. the time is short and you, yeah. and you love playing golf. Why yeah. do you want to play badly if and, and there's a simple remedy there? And you and don't want to have things ingrained. You know, absolutely. You know, if you're playing poorly for a long time, you're going to start making compensations for those habits mm -hmm. and so, so get regular help so that's our number and one. And be proud of it because I remember when we were in Europe um, the people at the golfers in Europe feel honoured that they're having lessons you know like they okay. the more lessons they have the better they yeah. think it's whereas maybe in Australia we kind of think oh she'll yeah. be right mate yeah, we can do it a lot of sugar rather right. than you know like yeah. this is a it's a tough game yeah let's yeah. learn this correctly let's be mentored let's be coached yeah okay number two thing that pros do that amateurs could easily do is warming up i know warm so when most of my uh, clients and, and even if i'm having a game with my friends they'll go well tee off at 10 let's get there at five to ten i gotta go you gotta be joking i want to get there Probably people won't, but I want to at least warmed up because I don't want to spoil my four and a half hours on a golf course. Mm. And most people go, oh, it takes me about, I don't stop playing well until about the sixth hole. And they haven't yeah, warmed so up. wasted the first five. So, you know, it's, time is short, as we yeah. keep saying, and, and we've got to enjoy it. It have to be long, hour long. Obviously, no. the pros will do an hour long warm up and they'll have a very strict routine and they'll do it every single time. Yep. But you don't have to give yourself a half an hour, maybe 10 minutes putting, 10 minutes chipping, 10 minutes hitting in the nets. If, if that's all you can manage, yep. that's that's okay. Allow yourself to sort of, you know, get slow and calm. And okay. So that's our second tip. What's our third tip? <laughs> our memories. <laughs> our, our third tip. Practice. Practice. That's but right. not just bulk practice. Yeah. Purposeful practice. Practice. practice.
that. Yes, that's right. So this, the, the three levels of practicing are, you can do bold practice where you're working on your technique and you might be hitting a quite, quite a few balls. You're kind of trying. Yeah. You might be doing some drills. So you're doing that, which is generally what most people do. And then they wonder why it doesn't apply to the golf course. Yeah, yeah. So the second stage is to sort of maybe now only have three or four balls and, and play some games. Okay. Yeah, so that's so getting a bit more like the golf course. More like the golf course. The third Put part, a bit of on. which most people do not do, yeah. is to practice as if you're on the golf course. So it's the one ball rule. Yeah. So you have one ball. Go through your routine. Go through your routine. Yep. Have a different right. target or a different club. Mm -hmm. If you're practicing your chipping, mm -hmm. one ball, finish out, see what score you get. So mm -hmm. kind of keep a score. Put yourself yep. under the pressure. Yep. Very, so we always say we should practice as we play, but really, or play as you practice, but I think you need to practice under pressure. Yep. Very good. And once you've had a lesson, there might be something specific to work on, so yep. that'll be your bulk practice. Yep. And um, I think if you're not sure about how much practice to do, give yourself like a schedule for the week. You could do one at the range, one short game session, and some putting. And stuff at home. Like stuff, stuff at home, at putting home. on the carpet is good. Yep. Do so, drills at home yep. and go into your backyard and have a couple of swings. Yeah, exactly. So get a little bit disciplined. Give yourself a little schedule and your game will benefit. People, I don't think they get how helpful practice is. People think, oh, it's not going to make much difference, but it actually, try it. It makes a massive, massive Yes. But make sure, though, that you're doing it correctly. There's no point just beating balls. Yeah. Because beating balls, that's... that comes back to getting lessons, doesn't it? Yeah. If you're getting lessons, you know what to practice. Yeah. And your coach should be giving you how to practice. Yeah. Um, and, and what's that old saying, which is so true? Practice doesn't make perfect. Practice makes, makes permanent. permanent. Good one. There's a sound bite. <laughs> <laughs> and our fourth one was physical fitness. Now, the pros work a lot on being physically fit so that they have the stamina to get to yep. the end of the round, right? If you're on the 15th hole every time you play and you're exhausted and you can hardly drag your, you know, clubs up the hill or whatever it might be, then um, then you need to do a little bit of work on your physical fitness. And that will affect you mentally as well. Exactly. But I think it's not only the physical fitness, because that's one of my goals, to get stronger, but I think it's also, as we may be getting wiser with the years, we need to stretch our muscles too. Yeah. So I think it's very important to do gentle stretching. There's a lot of really good stuff now on gentle stretching, golf stretching, YouTube. YouTube. Just you don't have to be like uh, uh, doing all of this, but the stretching for just golf keeps your supple yep, flexibility is massive. Yeah. Yeah. If that goes, everything's yeah. kind of going as well. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have to do a lot. No, either. you don't have to. Do Five, a lot. ten Keep minutes. Your flexibility. That's your number number one. Yeah. Thing. And then the mental side of the game. They obviously the pros. They realise just how important mm -hmm. that is. How to think positively. They they do some exercises with their mind. They do some Meditation. meditation. So there's lot, again lots of stuff out there. Mindfulness. Mindfulness, Mindfulness. is really great with golf. Yep. It helps you to calm down. It lets you get into the present moment. That's I would it. highly recommend doing some mindfulness um, yep. videos. Like there's an app out there by Sam Harris, mm -hmm. which is that's the app I'm using. Okay. Um, and it's on mindfulness, and that just helps you calm down, stay, calm, stay, stay in, in the, the present. Moment. Because the biggest things with golf, with the mental side, is staying in the moment, not worrying about what's coming up, not worrying about what's gone behind, staying in the moment, visualising your shot. So there's a few different things and we'll go into those in different videos. But I don't think they should get exercises that help you to control your mind. Absolutely. To, to get exercises so you're not so Focusing hard on yourself. Yeah. yeah. And a lot of it Believe it or not, it's such common sense. Yeah, like absolutely. Dr. Bob Rotella has some great stuff out, and it's total common sense. Exactly. exactly. There's a lot of great stuff out there, so yeah. you take advantage of it. You know, yeah. anything that's going to help your game, right? Yeah. And our bonus, bonus, is equally as important as all the others, is being fitted for your golf clubs because it's so important. It's different strength, they've got different lengths, tools, all that stuff. So you so you need to get your correct lie angle, that's the angle the shaft goes into the club. Yep. Um, that is different for every human being, and it's not. It doesn't depend on your height or the length yeah. of your arms. It's like a, a thumbprint. You and don't that's know what's the way. Be. Like if this is the ground, the way the club hits the ground yes. or sits on the ground. So if if you if your club's not correct for you, it's going to affect your direction. Uh, absolutely. So if your club is going into the ground too much, mm -hmm. it's going to veer off to the right. Yeah. Of course, golf's a target game. You will find a way, yes. and you'll create faults to kind of get the ball back there. The
the length of the shaft is vital. Yes. Um, the um, thickness of the grip. Yep, the stiffness in the shaft, that that suits you. And then there's one really important thing, head design's important, but the other really important thing is that then those clubs get made the way you want them. So like I've been doing club fitting now since I've been a golf pro and it's vital, like you've got to have clubs that fit you and, you, and your, your score will improve your swing. It's really hard as coaches to fit someone who has clubs that are not fitted to them because they can't and really do And they can't do a balanced swing. That's the problem. And they even your putter, do, right? Yeah. Like a lot of, I see a lot of women come to me with a putter actually touching them in their tummy. I know. So you need to get the right length so you can swing. This yeah. is, yeah, so it's, it's vital. You might as well take advantage of these. Um, and you can do it now. Like years ago, it was really tough to get clubs fitted, but now you can get the clubs fitted and it's well worth the investment. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's the last two for years. Yeah, exactly. Ten years. Ten years. Ten years. My clubs are about 15 years old. Mm -hmm. I'm getting new, new ones. ones. I'm getting new yeah. ones. Yes. So that's it. our biggest six things that we think the pros do on a regular basis that you could easily do and, and just let us know. Do it for do it for a month, right? Yeah, and just let us know. But I think also any just to every one of those six things you you have control of no yeah, one else yeah. so Absolutely. why wouldn't you do what yeah. you can control yeah yeah because golfers love to control let us know how it goes we'd love to hear from you comments um subscribe to our channel and anything new that we have coming out will yep. come straight out and any ideas anything any you ideas, want us to we'd do love to hear from yep. you with ideas of what you'd like to see us talk about because otherwise we'll just keep on talking and talking and that talking is a bit of a worry, <laughs> <laughs> see you next time bye for now bye.